so at 4.9 volts it looks like about 300 rpms the neon will flash I do reach 200 volts spikes at 4.9 volts and even a little less if I take like I said if I take this off you can see the neon flashing and we'll lower it down a little you see the neon starts to flash at 4.8 so I'm getting an average of 100 plus volts here on the spikes you want to make it a little higher maybe like right about there so you get like a constant five volts five volts seems to be good I could turn this all the way up and it, and it hauls ass but then you know I don't want to wear down the bearing so I leave it at five volts <clears throat> The ceiling fan got a bridge rectifier on the top here now let's see if the light goes on the LED is it making power not fast enough let's turn it up a little faster You can see a little bit of light there. So it's putting out energy, probably from these magnets that are rotating. And they're just north pole magnets, so that's why you're seeing a pulse. Because it's like, uh, there's only four magnets on this wheel. I'm going to turn this up a little higher. Maybe about eight volts. And it's speeding up too. Let's see if the light goes on. You can see it a little better now the light. And you see how it's pulsing? I'm gonna turn this up all the way. With without this and straight to the power supply. Because it's got a lot of it's you know it's a good power supply, 1.5 amp. I'm going to go up to 11 volts here, or whatever this thing brings me to. Like, I'll show you, watch, when I stop the wheel, stop the wheel, and you see how the power supply goes up to 11? That's because I'm not pulling any energy from it. When I start the wheel, now you see how the power supply drops to 10.5. <clears> or <throat> 10.76 and 5. That's because it's starting to draw energy as it speeds up. And those pulses of light that you're seeing are happening from these four magnets on this wheel penetrating this shell which actually is a EMF barrier for the coils in here. And there's probably a, a small ring magnet in there that's not very powerful. If not, it's just a piece of metal because then you can energize this coil to still spin it with no magnets in here. And I've seen fans like that. So I'm pretty sure that this ring is not even magnetized. But these magnets on the outside are penetrating the electromagnetic shielding here. And they're hitting that magnetic ring, transmitting to the coil in here causing a little bit of pulse here of light 
because you know if I had the shielding gone and still had these attached while they were spinning I would still have DC pulses coming out of here so let's spin it up you know you see it'll start dropping I'll stop it, it start, goes to 11 when I spin it up it immediately drops because it's you know it's triggering transistor sending pulses of energy to this battery bank and you can see at 10.7 get a nice flash of light there see that nice spike too nice well done John nice simple very simple little circuit got to come up with more of these simple little circuits like the jewel thief or DC to AC which is another cool little circuit I can show you with the voltmeter <clears throat> But I'm not gonna, you're gonna have to take my word on it. There's about eight or nine volts of force happening here on each on each one of these uh, stator windings. And the force is coming from my North Pole magnets. And these are just 50 cent magnets. They're not even neodymium. And the force is coming from that because the stator is not moving in there. But these magnets are moving around and they're penetrating the magnetic shielding on this casing. I'm telling you, there's no magnets in this fan. It's just a stator coil when it's energized. It acts like a magnet on the outer ring, causing it to spin. It's dropping down to 10.6. And here you can see the output, the pulses happening from my 50 cent magnets, which are penetrating, once again, they're penetrating the shielding on this fan, the exterior casing. My magnets on the surface there are causing that energy to happen here that you see. So that means, whoa, you see, see, nice and bright. There you go. There you go. It's about, I don't know, I gotta measure it. It's a small amount of energy. That's because uh, the flux from my exterior magnets on this fan rotor are not really penetrating the inside disc that's in there. I didn't take it out yet. This is fan unaltered. Part two will be when I open this fan up, take out the metal disc that's in there or leave it. Better to take it out because my magnets are penetrating this light casing here. If I don't take it out and I leave it, then I have to put magnets on the inside. It might be easier to just put more magnets on the outside and create a DC generator and keep, instead of four magnets, put eight. And let's see, that might be enough to create enough DC energy to run this circuit without a, deep, without a power supply. I take the output from this rectifier feed it into this capacitor bank and take out this power supply and this capacitor bank is being powered by this power supply and this power the capacitor bank also has a 1 point kilovolt 9 nanofarad AC ceramic resistor mounted across it I don't know if you can see that to um, catch the spikes so I don't blow out the capacitor or damage this capacitor because this capacitor is only rated for 80 volts and that's rated for 1. kilovolts. so this will catch whatever spikes that come back to the power supply because I've already blown a few power supplies so I figured if I do this I could not blow my power supply anymore so part two will be I will open this fan up I will take the metal disc out of it and I'll place another magnet inside to strengthen the, the EMF hitting the stator maybe double up to eight instead of four and keep this a monopole north pole magnet north facing outwards and the south would be facing inwards 
<clears throat> so let's see if the south pole generates enough energy to keep this monopole north pole this coil is facing north and against that magnet so it's like when the coil gets triggered it turns into a north field the core does the metal core that metal core goes around the front that would be the south pole that's the north pole right down there that's the north pole in there you see the copper coated welding rods and that's a north magnet so when the magnet is spinning it gets pulled to the core for free right and then when it lands over the core the magnet transmits EMF through the secondary winding which is the trigger winding and that triggers the transistor to let power in in a pulse fashion from the capacitor bank into the circuit to turn that core into a north pole for a pulse and that time that that happens is when the magnet lines up over it so it goes boom 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 pulse 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 and in between each pulse is being pulled for free because it's metal it's not a magnet anymore remember the core only becomes a magnet when your magnet lands over it because that's when it triggers the transistor to let the energy through the power winding to turn it into a an um, electromagnet, basically. Over and out. Part two will be with uh, opening up this fan and making some alterations on the inside by either adding magnets. I'm going to figure something out to increase my power output. Hopefully I can get this thing to run off its own energy. Once it reaches a certain RPM, I should be able to turn off the power supply and use the power coming out of here to keep it running. And then from there, I got to be careful how much I draw out of the system so I don't lose RPMs. So you can do that with a Zener diode once you figure out your voltage output. Okay, later people. The Dini SSG ceiling fan.